All right, so the Red Wings won today, and I kind of use that game as the reason why this video is coming out later, because before the Red Wings got underway with their inevitable 3 nothing win over the Devils, we had ourselves some pretty good news that I thought was really video-worthy, but I'll let you in on a little secret here. This is kind of how YouTubers think. I'm not going to upload a video about the Red Wings right before the Red Wings game, because what are Red Wings fans going to be doing when the Red Wings game is on? They're going to be watching the game. And when you upload videos on YouTube, hey, guess what? The majority of your interactions come on the video in the first hour and a bit. So if I upload a video right at the start of Detroit versus New Jersey about Detroit, most of the people that are Red Wings fans that watch this channel will probably not have their attentions focused on this channel. They'd be focused on the game. So I waited until the end of the game, and now we're going to be talking about the Red Wings and their signing that they made today, but we're also going to be talking about another Swedish defensive prospect that is in the Red Wings system and that is of note as well because over the past few days we have had some very positive news about this player. And so without further ado, let's talk about, firstly, Simone Edvinson, a Red Wings signee from today, who was drafted by the team in the first round of the 2021 NHL entry draft. Edvinson was taken in the sixth overall spot, which is kind of poetic when you consider the last time the Red Wings drafted a big defenseman, smooth skating, defensively sound guy in the sixth overall position, cough, cough, more at cider. But for Edvinson, he was taken and he became an immediate fan favorite. A lot of Red Wings fans went out there and talked about, okay, this could be the ultimate pairing for Cider. I mean, this is the guy that if he comes over to the Red Wings soon, it's no longer going to be Cider and DeKaiser. It's going to be Cider and Edvinson, two big hulking dudes. Okay, even though Edvinson is a hulking guy, 6'5". He's a little on the lanky side because he is only 207 pounds. Now, 207 is not a bad number in the slightest. It's just, okay, he's 6'5". So that's a little less meat on the bone, but Edvinson does have himself a profile that is good enough to show off the skills, the smooth skating, the defensive gap control. He's such a talented defenseman, and he just signed his entry-level deal with the Red Wings earlier this morning, which will start in 2022-2023. Now, for Edmondson, it is kind of interesting to see where he is going to go, because this season playing for Ferlinda, he had 19 points in 44 games played. Certainly not bad. He did not produce as well as Moritz Sider did when Sider was with Regla last season, but you gotta remember when Sider was playing in Regla, that was his draft plus two a year. Edvinson is in his draft plus one, so it kind of balances out in a way. But either way, with Edvinson signing over onto Detroit, this means that the Red Wings have a few options for next season. Obviously, yes, he can play with the regular Red Wings. Now, is he going to do that right away? I'm not really too sure. We know Steve Eiserman and the Red Wings love to be conservative with how they develop their guys and how quickly they allow these guys to play. Now, it has been sort of a pattern that has shifted over the years. Dylan Larkin played his extra year in Michigan, and then he came over, so he's kind of an exception. Moritz Sider, as we said, he played two seasons away from Detroit before coming over to Detroit. Detroit this season. But if you want to talk about Edvinson and other guys that have played on the same team, look no further than Lucas Raymond to find an example of a guy who comes over to the NHL after his draft plus one. Raymond was with the Frolinda Hockey Club as well last season, and then he played in Detroit this season. He was really good. So maybe if the management do feel like, okay, Edvinson is ready, he's polished enough to make the team, then they'll give him that opportunity. It's just recent track record of the Red Wings prospects suggests that that's probably not going to be the case, but either way, I don't think anybody's really looking to rush this guy in. I mean, he's only 18 years old, so or excuse me, he's 19, he turned 19 in February. But either way, having him under contract for next season is a good thing because the Red Wings will have that accessibility to him and his services. If he does play next season, him skating alongside a cider will be such a treat to watch, just saying. Like, you want to talk about DeKaiser cider? Yeah, let's talk about Edvinson cider too, because these guys... Smooth skating, puck handling defensemen that can complement each other very well, plus the fact that it's going to make everything else easier for the rest of the lineup. It's going to be a blast seeing Simone Edvinson playing with Sider, especially with the precision and the details that are in his game. But still, there are a few options. It's either Red Wings next season or Grand Rapids. They do have the option to do that. Or if they wanted to send him back to Furlunda for 2022-2023, that certainly would be an option too. It says on Elite Prospects that he has commitment to Furlunda for 22-23 on a loan. So if that's the case, then I guess we'll see where things go from here. But Edvinson is not the only Red Wings prospect in Sweden who has been doing some pretty good work. Let's take our talents over to Regla, so the team that Sider played on last year, and talk about 19-year-old William Wallinder, who is also a Red Wings prospect, taken in the second round of the 2020 NHL entry draft. 
Edvinson is 6'5". He's 200 pounds. You want to talk about Lanky? Hey, William Wallander is 6'4", 190 pounds. So another left-handed defenseman who has such a unique profile. Wallander's in the news because with his 19 points in 47 games, he was given the award for the top junior player in the entire SHL. This was from earlier today, and it is interesting to note the previous winners of this award. Eklund won last year. He is a Shark Sky. Bemstrom won a few years ago. Then you had Rasmus Dahlin, Eric Sinek, Gustav Forsling, a few other guys that have entered this conversation too. But Wallander winning the Best Junior Player of the Year award, it's pretty much the Calder, I guess, if you want to talk about it that way. Although junior does not necessarily indicate rookie, it just means a guy that is under a specific age range. But Wallander had himself a pretty good year as well after transitioning into the SHL from lower levels of play. He played in the Allsvenskan mostly for Moto last year, getting six points in 43 games. And I know a lot of people who were paying attention to Wallander and his development and saying, okay, I get it, this guy is 18, he's young. But six points in 43 games in your draft plus one year after getting drafted by the Red Wings, it's not really the best. And I get it. That's definitely something that you can pay attention to. But for Wallander this year, his overall point production skyrocketed in a pretty good way when playing with the regular team. And if you're paying attention even more to how he's developed, it's actually pretty great to see just the strides that he has taken. Here's the scouting report on Elite Prospects talking about Wallander. He towers over the competition, standing 6'4 and weighing 194 pounds. There's plenty of room for him to fill out that frame. He might be the most technically skilled skater amongst all defensemen in the draft. He's a great puck carrier eager to lead his team up the ice, and with a great deal of initiative and creative offensive chances. Wallander is just one of these really fun guys that you love to see because you love to see him move around the offensive zone. He's just got an edge that I don't think a lot of other defensemen in the draft in 2020 have had, and it's been a real treat to watch him develop into what he is now. Of course, though, his contract for Regla is actually signed until 2023, so the Red Wings have a pretty big timeline to work with here when you talk about the development and the inevitability of Wallander making the wings or the Grand Rapids Griffins in due time. We'll see next year where Wallander goes with his game in the SHL for 2022-2023, but then we'll see if he gets that contract once Stevie Y settles everything down. So talk to me in the comments all your thoughts about Wallander and Edvinson and everything they've done so far in the SHL, or not so far, I mean the season's pretty much over, but what exactly it is you were impressed by, what do you see out of these players, what have you seen out of these players, and as well, you can let me know in the comments if you have any thoughts on the other guys that have been suiting up for the Red Wings and the SHL as well, because it's not even just Edvinson and Wallander who are there. You have Albert Johansson playing for Fagestad, you have also Elmer Soderblom who has been in the Forlunda system too, not to mention Theodore Niederbach who has been so, so good that I think we might actually have to make a video about him too sometime soon. I don't know, you can let me know in the comments if you want to see any more videos talking about the Red Wings guys and their prospects. By the way, if anybody was looking for a Lego Rocks recap of the 3-0 win against New Jersey, I'm sorry, I didn't see the game. I was making the previous Why I Want video that just went up on the channel while that game was going on, and besides, I couldn't watch the game if I wanted to because regional blackouts are a thing, and as I said, I couldn't have the game on on my computer because, I mean, I'm talking about prospects. I kind of need to have my attention on the YouTube channel, so... Apologies to anybody who wanted to see my thoughts on everything that went down. Let's just go over to the recap. Can we do that? Here we go. Red Wings and Devils. Let's see what happened in the game, of course. Yeah, 3-0, 3-0. Goals in the first period and the third period. Who scored? I didn't actually see this. Bertuzzi, Sunquist, and Michael Rasmussen. There you go. Him getting some more production. I've heard some very good things about Rasmussen the past few weeks from a lot of Red Wings fans who have been reaching out over to me. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about all this stuff, the prospects, the game, I guess, and Edvinson and Wallander specifically. I hope you enjoyed this. And bye.